Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with the Realism Overhaul set of mods where I've made Realism Overhaul configurations for ESA Quest's Blue Moon Mark II lander. So this is a lunar lander and it is proposed by Blue Origin, presumably being made by Blue Origin, and ESA Quest made the model of it. I had intended to make a model of it, but since ESA Quest had already done that, I presume it's pronounced ESA Quest. Uh, I decided to just make configurations for it so that it's suitable for real solar system and real fuels and tack life support. So that's what we're going with here. Um, it is not compatible with RP1. That's up to the RP1 people where they want to put it in the tech tree and how to price it. I just work and I didn't make it compatible with Kerbalism, which is a whole other thing. So it is compatible with real solar system, real fuels, and TAC Life Support, which this is traditionally what was necessary for something like this to be compatible with real Realism Overhaul. So I uh, just want to be clear about that. But when I say compatible, uh, the numbers are good, but who knows if they're exactly right. Um, so they haven't given us exact numbers for everything. The numbers that I did have were that it's more than 45 tons um, on launch. Its dry mass is 16 tons, and it is 16 meters tall. That's what I've got. So in sizing the model 16 meters tall, and it is 16 meters tall, I realized that the diameter would have to be about 6 meters, which would fit inside New Glenn's fairing. So that's fine. But uh, that leaves us with a lot of extra volume that, uh, well, it would be a lot heavier if we really filled up that volume with fuel. Now, it could be that they just have a lot of insulation layers on this, like uh, half a meter to a meter thick insulation on this. And, you know, for hydrogen, that makes sense. So maybe that's the situation, that we've got a whole lot of insulation and the tanks aren't nearly this big, and they're actually much smaller in there. Uh, but it, it could potentially have a lot more volume for fuel, and then there's also the thing where it says that the cargo variant in reusable mode uh, has a payload capacity to the surface of 20 tons. Well, that would require more fuel too. Now, it depends on where it's starting out from. We have a healthy amount of delta V here. We've got 5,773 meters per second. Now, that it's supposed to land from near rectilinear halo orbit. I've started off pretty high, and we're going to take some extra delta V to bring the periapsis down. Uh, but, and obviously I'm testing the landing, otherwise I can't release it, the release the RO configurations to you guys. The RO configuration will be in the video description, along with a link to the original mod. Uh, but, yeah, that's, a, that's enough to get from this orbit down to the surface, I think. 26 minutes is rough, but, uh, well, they put three engines on here for a reason. So, yeah, I think it'll be doable. Uh, but... We're not carrying 20 tons to the surface. You can see a dry mass of 16 tons. Most of that's the cabin down here. And I presume that when they said dry mass 16 tons, they meant this is the version with the crew cabin. And the little bit more than 16 tons that we have there is the supplies, including for a fuel cell, uh, which I have configured for hydrogen and oxygen. The RCS is configured to hydrogen and oxygen as well for simplicity's sake. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more volume in the tanks available should we want to put more fuel in, and maybe the cargo variant needs that, is basically what I'm saying. So right now, we're not carrying 20 tons to the surface, but it's supposed to be able to, so maybe we'll need the extra volume. But right now, we're not using the extra volume. And when they said more than uh, 45 tons, right now, fully fueled, we're 60 tons. That's what I'm going for. Uh, that used to be a requirement for the lunar landers, that the lunar lander was 60 tons or less or something like that, so I've gone with 60 tons. So, I mean, obviously that's not relevant to Starship at all, but anyway, um, let me just get all the thruster stuff. I, I don't know why, uh, oh, the landing legs have little thrusters? Or maybe that's just to deploy them, I don't know. I didn't see any thruster stuff on them, but they have that icon. Okay, otherwise we do have thrusters on the instrument unit and on the cabin, and let's see if they work. Okay. Well, I heard it using the RCS thrusters now, and it's certainly turning. 
Now, I'm not going to change any effects on it. That's down to the original mod, so... Yeah, I don't see the thruster firings, but that sort of effect is up to the mod to manage. Okay, but I'm not going to worry too much about the effect right now. Uh, we are going to... So peel down, can we? Hmm. It doesn't seem to have thought of where the thrusters need to be in order to work. When you look, take a look at where the thrusters are, there's no way to actually sell the fuel down here. But it wouldn't need to be able to transfer in this direction, uh, because otherwise, how is it going to dock? So I think there are thr some thrusters missing here, and I can't do a whole lot about that. Um, the best I can do is say that the BE7s don't require ullage. They do not require us to settle them down. That's all I can do. So I'm going to set that to false. Okay, trying this again after that change. So you may need some supplementary RCS thrusters that are downward facing, depending on what you want to do with this. Um, that's about all, about all I can say about that. There is room inside the cabin. Uh, there is volume available to put other propellants, just in case you need a different propellant mix other than the hydrogen and oxygen we have here. But all right, for now, the engines will work out. Well... Let me just see... Okay. We have 10 ignitions on these right now. And I didn't change the plumes either. They they are very complicated plumes from the look of it. As they change depending on the throttling. The engines throttle down to 10% of their total thrust. And I've set the total thrust to 40 kilonewtons. Okay, I'm not going to target any particular location. We're just seeing whether this can land. And again, it's powered by a fuel cell right now. The landing burn is going to be quite long. And this is a very tall lander, so the probability of me tipping it over is high. Okay, here we go. Ignition. The one part on here that isn't a part of the mod is the NASA docking system. I put that on. The instrument unit has a deploy instruments thing. Yes, we can deploy them even now. There's a light emission. Activate radiator. I don't know how well that works with real fuels and the boil off, but well, we better improve that suicide burn countdown. Okay, really skimming it close here, so I have to pitch up more. I still think, I mean, even if it uh, seems uh, inefficient, I still think it has plenty of fuel for this. But again, it's supposed to carry some extra payload, not just the cabin. Hopefully the fact that the cabin is the heaviest part after these drain will help us remain stable, but that's after these drain. These won't be fully drained by the time we set down on the surface. The heavy tank is the oxygen tank, uh, and the center mass is sort of right there, according to the click. But um, we'll see. <laughs> I'm worried about this tipping over. Okay, now we're in better shape. But the suicide burn countdown is still, still negative. Well, that's some bumpy terrain coming up. Yeah, I'd rather land over here than on the slopes there. Let's see if I can do it. There's some sort of seam here in the textures. Okay, here we go. Right next to this awkward ridge. Uh... I think I can... Oh, oh, kill rotation. Kill rotation. Okay, okay, stop. Wow, I actually managed to not tip it over. That's a miracle. I'm liking this lander all the way now. <laughs> this is a great lander, clearly. Wonderful lander, because <laughs> it didn't tip over. 
All right, 33 tons on the surface. 3,141 can get you back to Lunar Gateway, no problem. And I didn't do a particularly efficient descent at all. So, yeah, this has enough to do the job. And it's certainly above 45 tons, that, that's for sure. And the dry mass is correct, the height is correct. Uh, the only issue is that, well, we don't know exactly the properties of the BE-7s, but they should be close to this. And the tanks seem to have more volume than we're actually using. But there might be just a huge amount of insulation on them. So, that's what I've got right now. Let's go to the VAB and see about the details. So, to put it together, I look up Blue Moon. And I had made a blue, uh, old version of the Blue Moon Mark I before, so I have some extra things here. But I'll just put the instrument unit first. I made it lighter than the mod originally had it. I don't think po more than 0.8. It depends on how you look at the radiator flaps and all. But anyway, the point is everything sums up to the right mass. And I didn't really want the very heavy weight right at the top. So 0.8 tons is what I've got for that. And then the propellant tanks go there. And... Hydrogen and oxygen, it says zero here, but they're not really zero. If we dump all the hydrogen and oxygen, uh, 5.8 tons, and 0.8 was the instrument unit at the top, so these are five tons dry, and then 44 tons with the fuel. So more than 10% the mass, I figure that's reasonable. Don't forget to put MLI layers unless you want boil off for some reason. And then the cabin. And the cabin mass is 9.1 tons with the supplies. And then the landing legs. The landing legs sort of go like this, but you have to rotate them so that the pointy thing's on top. And we have four of them. And so it's like that. And then you should retract them if you want to put them on New Glen. Uh, I'll leave them out for now. And then one part doesn't show up like this, and that's the BE-7. So I type in BE-7. I've got my own BE-7, but this is the one from the mod. Um, you know, it looks like that, basically. Uh, and there we have it. So we put those on in symmetry, and they should work. So potentially you might need some extra RCS thrusters, depending on what you're going to be doing with this, if you need to dock. Um, yeah. I think the current RCS configuration is a little bit limited for that. Though it seems to visibly, I mean, these I think are were supposed to be the RCS ports, but the bottom ports just didn't seem to be working to sell the fuel down. So anyway, maybe it'd work. I gave them uh, 0.4 kilonewtons, so 400 newtons of thrust, the RCS ports should be enough. And uh, also, if you want a dock, of course, you should put a docking port on top. There we are. And it's got the node inside, so it an, ends up being recessed like that. Maybe just so it doesn't interfere with the collider, pull it out a little. That depends. Okay, and deploy instruments goes like that. So, there you have it. ESA Quest's Blue Moon Lander, configured for realism overhaul as best as I could. And tell me if you think things need to be changed. Again, there are numbers that I do not know for sure. And I'll link the original mod and the RO configuration in the video description. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.